Okay, ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. So we're going to look at commonly misunderstood terms. We're going to bring some clarity to them. First one we're going to look at today is ducking. All right, ducking. Usually when we talk about a fighter ducked another opponent, it means he avoided that opponent for solely the purpose that he didn't want to lose or get hurt in a fight. Okay? Let's look at three examples. We're going to look at Timothy Bradley ducking Amir Khan. We're going to look at Floyd Mayweather ducking Antonio Margarito. And we're going to look at Amir Khan ducking Kell Brook. Okay? Now, Timothy Bradley, did he duck Amir Khan? Before I go into that, let me just say, in order to duck an opponent, you need to fight an opponent that is lower ranked on a lower scale than the opponent that you're ducking. Otherwise, if you're avoiding an opponent, or at least seemingly seem to be avoiding an opponent, but you fight an opponent that's better than that opponent in skills or in rank, or equal in skill and rank to that opponent, you're not really ducking anybody, okay? That's why you can't really say that Sugar Ray Leonard ducked uh, Aaron Pryor. That's not really a fair statement, okay? Aaron Pryor, first of all, he was a junior welterweight to start with, and second of all, the person that Leonard fought after uh, Aaron Pryor called him out was much better than Aaron Pryor to some degree. He was ranked higher, at least in the world. So you can't really say that Leonard ducked Aaron Pryor. Now let's get into it. Timothy Bradley ducking Amir Khan. How did this all happen? Let's get us some background to that. So here we have Timothy, uh, Timothy Bradley. He fought at welterweight, actually. He was at junior welterweight. He beat Lamont Peterson. Then he went on to fight Luis uh, Abregu. Okay? And if we go into Wikipedia here, we can see the whole breakdown. This is when Timothy Bradley actually got recognition for beating Junior Witter, taking the WBC junior welterweight, uh, junior welterweight title, also known as super lightweight. He beat Peterson. He beat Holt. And then he came to welterweight and he fought, he fought uh, Luis Abregu. And he beat him. At the end of that fight, Bradley openly made a challenge to pound for pound King Manny Pacquiao, calling him out, saying, come break down this wall. Bradley also called out Devin Alexander, Amir Khan, and Marcos Maidana. Okay? Now, when Bradley made that call out, Alexander answered the call, and there was a unification between the WBC and the WBO belts in which Bradley beat Alexander. Okay? Now at the end of that, the public wanted him to fight Amir Khan and unify the division. The public said, all right, let's see Timothy Bradley fight Amir Khan. And Bradley did not take the fight. So the WBC stripped him off his title because he wouldn't fight Amir Khan. And Bradley went on to join Top Rank. He left Gary Shaw Productions or Promotions and he joined Top Rank. Okay? Here it says he was stripped of his title due to inactivity. He joined Top Rank and he made his debut in November 2011 when he defeated Joel Casamayor. Now you have to ask yourself the question Joel Casamayor, was he as ranked as highly as Amir Khan? Some people can argue. Casimir, no, because he didn't have no title, he didn't have any belt, but he was a former world champion. Uh, Timothy Bradley, anyway, fought defending his WBO title against him, and he beat Joel Casimir. But here's the thing Joel Casimir was ranked alongside Amir Khan at the time. So, even though Bradley didn't fight Amir Khan, he did go and fight somebody who was ranked alongside uh, an Amir Khan. Because Joel Casimir was a world champion at uh, junior welterweight for a long time. Of course, the Joel Casimir that Timothy Bradley fought was a 40-year-old guy, you know. So, you really can't say that he really was, but he has a great resume, but he wasn't really on the par with uh, an Amir Khan, okay, to be fair. However, here's the point that you need to, that many people miss. He fought Casimir on the undercard of Manny Pacquiao versus Marquez, the third fight. 
and he knocked out Casimir, making a case for a shot at Manny Pacquiao. So the whole idea was Timothy Bradley was trying to get Manny Pacquiao, and he got him a couple months later, in June 9th, 2012. Timothy Bradley got Manny Pacquiao. So you have to understand that Timothy Bradley did not duck Amir Khan because one, he fought a relatively equal opponent in Joel Casemiro. Yes, a 40-year-old Joel Casemiro, but it was to exhibition him for a lineup to fight Manny Pacquiao. That was the whole point behind what Timothy Bradley did. Floyd Mayweather Jr. did just about the same thing. In 2006, Antonio Margarito was known as the WBO welterweight champion. Bob Arum wanted Floyd Mayweather Jr. to fight Antonio Margarito because in Bob Arum's words, he said, and I quote from Dan Rayfield of ESPN at the time, Bob Arum said, I think Margarito is the riskiest fight for Floyd Mayweather of anyone out there. That was Bob Arum's words. He wanted Floyd Mayweather Jr. to fight Antonio Margarito. The problem was that Floyd Mayweather Jr. did not want to fight Antonio Margarito. He said, I want to fight Oscar De La Hoya. Aram said Mayweather preferred to await the outcome of May 6 Oscar De La Hoya Ricardo Mayorga fight instead of committing to Margarito because he would prefer to fight Oscar De La Hoya. Because of that conflict, Floyd Mayweather bought out his contract with Bob Aram and he went on to fight another opponent, Carlos Baldomir. So instead of fighting Antonio Margarito in August of that year, in November of that year, he fought Carlos Baldomir. He was the WBC World Welterweight Champion. Now, you think about it, Baldomir and Margarito had basically kind of similar styles. They were come forward pressure fighters, big, strong, powerful dudes. So in a way, again, Again, this time Carlos Baldomir being undefeated for a very long period of time and having knocked out a number of people and being an Argentinian fighter. In a way, he was sort of equaling what Carlos, um, what uh, Antonio Margarita, a fight with Antonio Margarita would be. Sort of like what Timothy Bradley did. But yet, we don't really consider Carlos Baldomir a guy like Antonio Margarita because, again, he was kind of old. Okay? Nonetheless... That was the fight. But the fight was really setting up for a fight with Oscar De La Hoya. And De La Hoya was busy taking on Ricardo Mayorga. And May the next year, 2007, Floyd got his fight with Oscar De La Hoya, finally. He had been asking Bob Aaron for it for the longest while. Couldn't get it. So he finally got his fight. And this was the whole point behind it. Was it a duck that Floyd ducked Margarito? I don't think so. I think that Floyd Mayweather wanted Oscar De La Hoya and he realized Bob Arum couldn't get him him. He wanted him to fight all these other fighters. So he cut out Bob Arum, went on his own, and got the fight. Timothy Bradley, with Shaw Productions, couldn't get his fight with Manny Pacquiao. They were trying to send him all other directions with Amir Khan and so on. So Timothy Bradley decided he surrendered his belt and decided to go after Pacquiao by joining top rank. And that's how he got his fight. Let's look at Amir Khan versus Kell Brook. With the Amir Khan versus Kell Brook saga that we talk about, maybe Amir Khan is trying to get Manny Pacquiao as well. And so Amir Khan is probably thinking, I'm not going to go off onto a tangent and fight Kell Brook. That doesn't make any sense. So what he's trying to do is fight Chris Algieri to line him up to get a fight with Manny Pacquiao. Uh, by beating a similar opponent and probably in more devastating fashion. So this is probably the course that Amir Khan is going. Now, is Amir Khan <laughs> ducking Kell Brook? Well, remember, Chris Algieri, unlike Carlos Baldemir, who was a world champion, unlike, uh, unlike uh, Joel Casamayor, who has a great resume of fighters and so on, even though he was overaged, Chris Algieri has zero experience, and the only guy on his resume that really is worth anything is Manny Pacquiao and Ruslan Provotnikov. 
And he lost to Manny Pacquiao. And arguably, he was beaten by Ruslan because Ruslan knocked him down three times in that fight. Pacquiao six times. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a real stretch of the imagination to compare the ranking of a Chris Algieri with the ranking of a Kell Brook. Even though Kell Brook's only notable name on his list is Sean Porter. So you can make a case that Amir Khan is not necessarily ducking Sean Porter by fighting Chris Algieri if he ends up fighting Manny Pacquiao after. If he doesn't get Manny Pacquiao after, we got a serious problem. So um, Amir Khan, I think, is going the route to try and get Manny Pacquiao, not Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, is it a duck? It's absolutely a duck against... Uh, <laughs> against Kell Brook. We know that because he had an offer to fight Timothy Bradley, who is another person that Manny Pacquiao fought, and he turned down that offer. At least his team did. If he didn't, his team did. And that would have definitely lined him up for a fight with Manny Pacquiao if Manny Pacquiao doesn't retire after this fight. And possibly would have lined him up for a fight with uh, Floyd Mayweather as well. So, um, definitely... Uh, Chris Algieri is a far stretch from being anywhere at the level of a Kell Brook. And that's why I think Amir Khan has ducked Kell Brook. And I don't think anyone has ever ducked Amir Khan. I don't think Timothy Bradley ducked Amir Khan because he got Batty Pacquiao. I don't think Floyd Mayweather ducked Margarito because he got Oscar De La Hoya. You know what I mean? So we'll see if Amir Khan gets Manny Pacquiao. You know, Manny Pacquiao sometimes fights unworthy opponents. Sometimes he fights bums. So you never know, you know. So we'll see. You guys have a great one.